Good afternoon. For BlackPressMagazine.com, I'm DC Livers. There's more than one reason why the saucy and, let's face it, sometimes skanky hit reality TV show, I Love New York, threw the otherwise played out VH1 network into a brand new orbit. And it wasn't just Tiffany. Patrick Hunter, a.k.a. Tango, caused massive convulsions during his appearances on the show. He was rough, rugged, yet compassionately sweet, handsome like LL. He personified the whole term, intelligent thug. We have him with us today. I'm so excited to be talking to Tango. Tango, thank you so much for taking the time. It's my pleasure to meet you, DC. Man, you know, you have really just blown up. I mean, you, basically, my my niece said she explained it like this. She said, you're you like Tank meets Teddy Pentagram <laughs> meets Mike Tyson, you know. My my oldest sister said there's just something soulful about you and very real. And then my oh, second older sister said that you have a sexual magnetism, that, but it was sometimes overshadowed by the street fighting bad temper, though she admitted she liked that. You know? Yeah, yeah. From, oh, wow. from, from tumbling in the streets with your arch rival Chance to tumbling in the sheets with Sex Kit and Tiffany, you, know, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you showed that there that you were down for just about everything except one wow. thing, talking about your mama. So what I really want to talk about today, since we've been talking about Imus and how black women are treated in Hollywood, I want to talk about how brave it was of you to come up there and stand up for us as black women and to say, heck no, this is not going to go down like this. Right, you know, right. That was really a wonderful moment. It was great to see a black person, a black man stand up for black women. What made you do it? And uh, Honestly, I mean, um, that was my whole reason for coming on the show. In actuality, I didn't come on the show to, like, you know, be all in love with Tiffany. I never had that kind of attraction to her originally when I saw on the other shows or whatnot. I came on there because I saw... Uh, black female, you know, who, you know, I thought kind of got a bum rap on the show. I, I thought she went all out for a guy, and I'm like, hey, you know, if I'm a good dude, I'm a good brother, I figured that's the type of female I need to be approaching, you know, and um, so I went on the show and tried to portray the best positive black person, that black male I could at the time, to be honest with you, G- given the circumstances, if you know what I'm talking about. Right, sure. Um, so, I mean, really, honestly, it's like that's what I stand for, so there's no reason for me to stand up when that's actually what I portray. So, you know, naturally, again, when I went on there, I mean, I really felt that, you know, I mean, you know, I, there's a lot of females who have that, or should I say have those type of hang-ups about black men. They feel as though there's, there's the black men out there, you know, aren't supportive, they're not patient, because in actuality, that's really what it's about. I mean, I mean, nine out of ten females that are, like, past the age 21, I've met, like, every worst conceivable guy they could. I mean, let's be honest. You know, so, I mean, a lot of them have a, a bad perception on what the black man is about. So I, I want to kind of come on there and kind of say that, hey, I'm not going to be that idiot. I'm not going to be the funny dude. I'm not going to be, like, you know, the crazy cow show. I'm going to come on there and actually do what the show was about. You know, the show was called I Love New York. So, bam, I went on there to, to see if I could spark something up. Mm. Well, on many occasions, um, you put up your dukes and, you, you know, you, you went for it. You had a couple of scuffles on the show, but it, but it came across as if you really had love for New York. So let's get to it. You know, Did I you and do you have love for New York, Tango? Well, no, I, I have absolutely no love for New York, but I, I have a lot of love for Tiffany, though. Um, I, unfortunately, you know, I think there's way more in New York than there is Tiffany now. And uh, I feel as though we got we had a real good bond on the show, more so than what you guys saw. You know, there's a real good bond. I mean, during the show and after the show wrap, a lot of what you guys saw on TV, I mean, that wasn't, to me, that wasn't her. That was not her. That wasn't what she was really about. I saw somebody totally different behind the scenes. I saw somebody who went through a transition, went from somebody who was just playing a role and just being somebody for, for the public. And then she could turn it off, and then she can go home, and she can call, hey, Tan, what's up, man? What's going on? And we have an intellectual conversation. Then, of course, time progressed, months passed. And, you know, well, put it like this, DC. You ever met someone who tells so many lies or, or creates a character so much that they start to believe it? Mm. And that's really what the case was. She turned into somebody I really, I really wasn't feeling. And um, a man like me, I mean, I'm a patient guy. I'm a patient black man, but that's just a few things. I just can't stand for. I, my patient does have, have a breaking point. I got to be honest. Well, can't you cut us some slack? I mean, let's be real. You know, she became an overnight celebrity, and, and <laughs> there was probably tons of pressure on you guys to to be right. Tango, to be, you know, instead of Patrick, to be New York instead of Tiffany. Right. There was tons of 
pressure coming from all this. No one expected right. it to be the show it became, you know? Right. So, you know, maybe she just needs a little help finding her way back. Can, can you be that guy? Well, you know what? That's, you know, that's the funny thing, because when I saw her on the Flavor, I mean, Flavor Love 1 and 2, be honest with you, I thought that's really what it was. I thought that, okay, here, here's someone who just, doing what they have to do because based on the, the situation that they were in. Kind of like me. I was on this show, and, and let's be honest, D.C., I mean, I really don't feel it. I, I, there's a lot of dudes that was on this show that was not, and, and I'm not being mean, I'm not trying to toot my horn, that were not on my caliber or were not on my level, and I would never have to compete against in real life. You know, so I'm saying to myself, it's like, but I was a guy that was under attack and scrutinized on a regular basis, not even just from the dudes on the show, but also from her. So here I am on your show, Call I Love New York, and you're attacking me worse than the guys are. You know, and, I, and I'm thinking like, okay, here's Flav. When Flav was on the show, he showed the females a certain kind of respect. He didn't tolerate any fighting. When they argued around him, you know what I'm saying, he put a stop to it. She encouraged it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm a good black dude, and, and she even saw that herself, but she cons- she consistently tried to put me to, to a test. And I'm like, you know, it was uncalled for. And even off the show, in her interviews, you know, it just never stopped. She didn't know where Tiffany began and, and Tiffany and, and, and New York ended. That was the real issue. Mm-hmm. And I felt as though as I'm not there to kind of reinvent or help her with our identity crisis. You know, I'm there to you know, pretty much to show you, look, I'm a good black dude. You know, you don't have to act like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we all adults here, and I'm trying to show you some respect, so holler at me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, I, and a lot of people might say, and just for the public and for the people listening, I, I want people to understand that. It didn't start out as me being heartless about the breakup issue, but I'm going to be honest with you, the issue with my mother was just more or less kind of the, the nail in the coffin. It wasn't an actual, you know, complete issue. But that right there was just kind of like, whoa, you kind of went too far. You know, I don't a lot of stuff on the show. I mean, anybody can see that. You know, I looked. At, I mean, I was patient with some of the dudes on the show that wouldn't even step in me in real life that way. You know why? Because I stayed on the show. Like, All right, she's a cool female. She's just... Under a lot of pressure, let me be patient about the situation. I'm going to tolerate these dudes for oh so long. And, of course, my breaking point was on the reunion show, as everyone probably saw, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, for those who didn't have the pleasure of watching on April 15th when, when Tango came on the show looking luscious, <laughs> um, he was he was patient, he hugged her up, you know, they kissed her. Everybody thought it was going a certain way. Yeah, yeah. And... He turned the tables and, you know, delivered. Oh, what a clip thing. Oh, yeah, man, you, yeah. you, you brought the hammer down. But I think in a way, while, even though, you know, you you made it clear to her certain things were going to happen, I, I think your stock also went up in that moment. It was like, whoa. You know, there's always something sexy to women about a guy who can handle them. But I saw in my mind as a, as a journalist reviewing, you know, media, critiquing media all day, I was thinking, is this the next, you know, reality show? Has there been talk about you spinning off and having your own thing? Well, um, just just I, I'll go ahead and just well I'll go in and complete detail say yeah there there will be a project you know for Tango in the future um whether it's a dating show I can I can definitely tell you like no there there will not be a a dating show you know mm-hmm. I I love the ladies out there and I love the support Why and the love they show Why not? We'll you know all sign yeah. up. Come on now, give us a chance. Yeah, I mean, I, the only reason I did that is because for me, I, I thought it would be hypocritical. I felt like, uh, you know, I'm a real dude, and I went on the show. It was an unreal situation for me, and it was an it was more so an experiment more than anything else. But you know, and, and yes, I mean, you saw the show. I am I am single now, so that's not to say that I'm not looking for a, a, a you know, which is the case. I always, I, I never look for a female, but I I love for you know. You know what I'm saying? One to, you know, to kind of come my way. But be that as it may, you know, I got another show, and, and it, it will focus on my life. Uh, you know, there, there's a kind of a little twist to it. You'll, you'll see something, something pretty cool. It, it's something for everybody. You know, I, I, I hope, trust me, DC, you'll get the old scoop on that, you know, as, as time kind of progresses. But you'll love it. Trust me. Everyone's I'll hold gonna you love to it. that. Will it be on the same network? Oh, um, man. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say. Okay. I'm not, I'm not allowed to say. But it, it will be on cable TV. Okay. Ne- on Neither TV. one of us need to get sued, so we'll let that go. We won't, we won't, <laughs> exactly. be, we won't bust it out here. But listen, right. let's, let's just talk a little bit. I know the women out there are going to want to know, because I know I want to know, right. what kind of woman, you know, wh- what is it about, uh, what was it about Tiffany? What was uh-huh. it about New York that caught your eye? And, and is that what you're looking for now? Well, originally, the one thing about Tiffany that, 